Come, they did. Gunners, ordinary and able seamen, quartermasters, sailmakers and coopers, midshipmen, and powder boys to fight on ships in the revolution for freedom. Brave and adventurous men from each of the 13 colonies. Today, the United States Navy draws its men from every state in the Union. An average of 200 recruits report each day to the Naval Training Center, San Diego, California. I'd heard a lot of stories about boot camp, and now I was going to find out for myself. It didn't take long. right away. If you're a human being, they can fit you. Well, maybe not on the first try. The shots came so fast we didn't have time to say ouch. I'm Mr. Vincent, Master Chief Machinist Mate. On behalf of the Commanding Officer of Recruit Training Command, Captain Lockwood, I want to welcome you aboard. For about a half an hour, I'll be talking to you about different things that's going to happen to you during the next few weeks and the next few months you're here. Then we got down to the business of learning how to become Navy men. Of course, the Navy wanted to find out about us, too. You men are here today to take a series of tests known as the U.S. Navy Basic Test Battery. These tests are the most important tests that you will take while in recruit training. The results of these tests will determine what kind of training you will receive and to what degree. Writing hands in the air. Get them up there. Turn the page and begin. The instructor said these classification tests would determine what kind of training and job we'd get after boot camp. I did the best I could and found out later I'd made a good score. During the next few weeks, the time went by so fast it's hard to remember all the things we did. I know we sure learned how to march. I got to know my rifle real well. Steady, squeeze, bullseye. We learned how to fight disaster and escape it. Good afternoon, men. My name is Campbell, Chief Electrician's Mate. This afternoon, you've got two of your more important classes that you'll get here in. RTC, this is sound we learn something telephone. every day. The Navy has a lot of jobs, Interior and I began wondering what I'd be doing after boot camp. Compartment compartment. I remember my classification interview. 
Because I'd made a good score on my tests and was doing well in boot training, the chief said a lot of jobs were open to me. Radio, electronics, radar, missiles, and fire control. I found out that fire control meant controlling missiles and guns, not putting out fires. He said I could probably go to a school before I went on a ship. The chief asked about my jobs and hobbies and all before I came in the Navy, and he explained the different rates and what they did aboard ship. I asked a lot of questions. I figured the best thing was to get as much technical schooling as I could. The big day. We graduated from boot camp. Our company won the Brigade Award. leave and then report for duty. Some of my buddies were going right to ships, some to school. I got just what I wanted, Fire Control Technician A School. Education. Much more is needed now than in John Paul Jones' day, when one man could do almost any job on a fighting ship. Since then, the Navy has evolved from sails to steam to nuclear-powered missile-firing warships, each one a complex weapon requiring hundreds of skills to make her function. Today, Jones, in calling on the young, the brave, the strong, and the steady to sail with him, would also be looking for the educated. And he would find them. The United States Navy today spends more time and money educating its men than ever before in history. It must. The equipment and systems going aboard ships are complicated in their design and lethality. Missiles, search and fire control radars, data processing consoles, digital computers, missile launchers of many designs. Vital and exciting new equipment, but useless unless manned and maintained by trained personnel. To train its men, the Navy has established a far-ranging curriculum of schools at naval training centers across the nation. Name a major piece of equipment or system, and there is a course for it, a highly technical course, tough and demanding. Many classes are taught at the U.S. Naval Schools Command, Mare Island, California. The command chose an equation for its motto, Potestas est scientia. Knowledge is power. For these men, new students in the Fire Control A School, the equation is especially true. What they learn here will add up to early advancement and responsibility in their naval career. In an A school, learning starts with the basics. Here, the fundamentals of naval fire control, a science that started the day one boat hurled weapons at another boat. In today's Navy, Fire controlmen see the enemy by means of radar and a forest of designation consoles, computers, and electronic devices planted in the ship's weapon control center. The weapons they control are formidable, Terrier, Talos, and Tartar missiles able to streak beyond the horizon at more than twice the speed of sound.
This, then, is the modern Navy, the first line of defense. Guided missile ships that go where the action is. Destroyers, frigates, conventional and nuclear-powered cruisers and their men, deployed in readiness throughout the world. Assignments to missile jobs aboard these ships are reserved for those who request them, who are willing to work for them, and, to put it plainly, for those who are able to pass their technical courses. Sure, it's tough, but you feel like you're getting a lot out of it. Something that's going to mean a lot to you later on. The first part of Fire Control A School was 18 weeks long. I could have gone to a ship then, but they had this six-year obligor program. Sign on for another two years, and they really open things up for you the 14-week second part of A school and a 20 to 30-week C school after that for a total advanced training of more than a year. Top performers can make third-class petty officer before they get assigned to a guided missile ship. Courses are centered on the three fleet missile systems, Terrier, Talos, and Tartar. Students learn about the fire control radars, missile checkout equipment, digital computers, search radars, and designation equipment that transfers target information from search radars to the missile systems. Classes are kept small for maximum learning, and they often include students from friendly nations who are beginning to build guided missile fleets of their own. Students have more free time than in boot camp, and more things to fill the time with. Many attend night school courses at a nearby junior college. And even pirates had a warm spot in their hearts for San Francisco town. Things are pleasant, too, 3,000 miles away for students assigned to the guided missile school, Dam Neck, Virginia. At Damneck, six-year Obligor students and men from the fleet attend the same kinds of classes taught at Mare Island. Emphasis is on missile radars, computers, test units, and designation equipment. 
And in the heart of our country, men come to the sprawling Great Lakes Training Center just outside Chicago to learn the missiles and their launching systems. And there is much to learn. In John Paul Jones' Navy, a gunner's mate had to load, elevate, fire, and clean his gun. Here are some of the things a gunner's mate must do today. Operate, maintain, and repair guided missile launching systems. Make detailed electrical, electronic, hydraulic, and mechanical casualty analyses. Assemble and inspect missiles and prepare them for testing. Replace defective components and modules in the missile. Supervise personnel in the handling and stowage of missiles and missile components. These are difficult tasks. It is not an ordinary job. And that is why the Navy has authorized additional proficiency pay each month for qualified gunner's mates and fire controlmen. Sometime during his basic A school training, each student is interviewed and given an opportunity to go into the surface missile system program. Being officially accepted into the program is a reward for hard work, motivation, and demonstrated technical competence. From this point on, the candidate knows his schedule, when he will receive additional training, and what type of duty he will have aboard ship. Guided missile ships are joining the fleet at the rate of one a month. Ships with places to go and things to do. To get the special breed of men it needs to sail these ships, the Navy is launching new programs and opportunities, all of them based on education. The STAR program sends selected men through Navy technical schools and returns them to the guided missile fleet as petty officers. The NESEP program produces commissioned officers by way of four years of college and four months at an officer's candidate school. Modern programs for a modern Navy. I guess the first thing you notice is all the launchers and special radars. I recognized most of them from school. I didn't expect hammocks, but then I didn't expect music, air conditioning, and a reading lamp either. Pretty nice. When you get to enjoy it, that is. I didn't realize there'd be so much to do. Like the chief said in school, it's not a 9 to 1700 job. I work on designation equipment in the weapon control station. We have consoles for tracking targets, assigning missile radars to these targets, and for firing the missiles. The whole system ties in here. We have a lot of FTM rates on board, and they're spread all over the ship. Some of my buddies man a special search radar. Some operate missile fire control radars. And way below decks, other FTMs work on the missile computers. FTMs check out the missiles, too. When you're at sea, you can't call a factory to send a man out if something's wrong with a missile. You fix the trouble yourself.
GMM gunner's mates work right alongside the FTMs. We find trouble in the missile, if there is any, and they fix it. They're concerned with the missile itself, stowing it, fixing it, and when the time comes, getting it out onto the launcher. My ship is a guided missile cruiser, and it's named after a city, Columbus. And it should be named after a city, because that's what it is, a miniature city. We have our own barber shop, library, radio station, newspaper, police force, department store, church, post office, laundry, and restaurant. Food's great. This city employs cooks, electricians, system managers, painters, machinists, storekeepers, radio announcers, doctors, lawyers, and a lot of chiefs. But when trouble comes, Everybody becomes a fighting man. Men of the missile fleet work just as hard when they're not fighting. They replenish stores and weapons at sea. They keep their ASROC missiles ready while they hunt for submarines. They stand by to pick pilots out of the drink. They protect carriers from air attack. And they keep vigil in the troubled spots of the world. All of it hard, tough, challenging work demanding 100% from every man all the time. Join the Navy and see the world. It's true today more than ever, for the ships of the United States Navy carry the flag to all parts of the world in the quest for peace. In addition to ship assignments, there are many important positions for FTMs and GMs on shore. Some missile sailors return to teach in schools where they first were students. Others are assigned to teams that evaluate the performance of missile ships and their crews. Still others are called on to apply their special skills and knowledge in the testing of new missile designs. Sea duty, shore duty, more technical schools, more sea duty, more shore duty. Boot, petty officer, chief. This is the career cycle for men of the guided missile fleet. A career that is both an end and a beginning. 
for a man educated in the United States Navy is welcome everywhere. Our job is to keep the torch of freedom burning for all. To this solemn purpose we call on the young, the brave, the strong, the steady, the fearless, and the free. May those who hear it heed my call. Come to the sea, come, sail with me.